The House in the Wood From the Tales of the Brothers Grimm A poor woodcutter lived with his wife and three daughters in a little hut on the borders of a lonely forest. One morning when he was going to his work, he said to his wife, Send my eldest daughter out into the wood with my dinner at noon. I shall be quite ready for it, and that she may not lose her way, I will take that bag of millet with me and strew the seeds on the path. As soon as the sun had reached the meridian and was shining over the wood, the maiden started on her road with a large jug of soup and some bread for her father's dinner. But the field and hedge sparrows, the larks, the finches, and the other birds had long before picked up the seeds, so the maiden could not find the track. Fortunately, she went forward in the right direction, Yet the sun went down, and night came on before she could find shelter. The trees rustled in the darkness, the night owls screamed, and the poor girl was in great fear, when all at once she saw a light twinkling in the distance through the trees. There must be people living yonder, she thought, and no doubt they will give me a night's lodging. She turned her steps towards the light, and very soon came to a house through the window of which the light shone. She knocked at the door, and a rough voice cried from within, Come in. She stepped into the dark hall and tapped at the room door. The same voice cried, Come in. And when the door opened, she saw a very old man sitting at a table. His chin rested on his hands, and his white beard fell over it nearly to the ground. Near the stove lay three animals, a cock, a hen, and a speckled cow. The maiden told the old man of her trouble and asked if she could have a night's lodging. Instead of answering her, the old man turned to the animals and said, Little chicks and spotted cow, shall we keep her here or no? The animals made certain sounds which meant that she was to stay. So the old man said, You will find plenty of everything here. So go into the kitchen and cook us some supper. The maiden found an abundance of all she wanted, and after cooking a dishful of good food, she placed it on the table, and, seating herself with the old man, ate a hearty meal. But she never thought of the animals. When she was satisfied, she said, I am very tired. Where is a bed on which I can sleep? In reply came a voice, you can eat and drink, but you cannot think, poor animals such as we. You shall have a bed just to rest your head, but you don't know where it will be. The maiden scarcely noticed what the voice said. For the old man told her to go upstairs, where she would find two rooms, and with a bed in each. She was to shake the beds well and make them both. The young maiden went quickly upstairs, made her own bed, and... Without thinking of one for the old man, she lay down and went fast to sleep. After a while, the old man came up to his room, and, finding his bed not made, shook his head, and going into the room where the young maiden was sleeping, opened a trap door in the floor, and let down the bed on which she lay into the cellar beneath. Meanwhile, the woodcutter returned home in the evening very late, and reproached his wife for having left him the whole day hungry. It is not my fault, she said. I sent the maiden with your dinner at noon, and I suppose she must have lost her way. She'll be back again tomorrow, no doubt. Before day, however, the woodcutter was obliged to be off to the forest, and he desired his wife to send his second daughter with his dinner. I will carry a bag of linseed with me this time, he said. As the seeds are larger than the millet, she will see them more easily, and will not be likely to lose her way. But at noon, when the maiden went with her father's dinner, the linseed had disappeared. The birds of the forest, as of the day before, had picked them all up, so that there were none left. She also wandered about all day, and at last found a good supper and a night's lodging in the old man's cottage. But she also never thought of feeding the animals, or of making the old man's bed. So at night, while she slept, he opened the trapdoor, and let her down to the cellar below as he had done her sister. On the third morning, the woodcutter told his wife, 
You must send our youngest child with my dinner today. She is always good and obedient. She will not lose her way as her sisters have done. They wander about like wild bees when they swarm. The mother, however, would not listen. No. Why should I lose my dearest child now that the others are gone? Don't fear. The maiden will never wander. She is too clever and sensible. Besides, I will take a quantity of peas with me and strew them in the way to show her the right path. They are so much larger than linseed and will be sure to remain. So the next day the mother, with much advice and caution, sent her youngest daughter to the forest. She carried a basket on her arm, but there were no peas to guide her. They were all in the crops of the pigeons, and therefore she knew not which path to take. She was very unhappy, and thought of how hungry her poor father would be, and how her mother would fret if she remained away all night. However, in her wanderings after dark, she also saw the light and came, as her sisters had done, to the house in the wood. She went in and begged for a night's lodging so gently, the man with the white beard said to his animals, Little chicks and spotted cow, shall we keep her here or no? The voice answered, Yes. And presently the maiden went over to the stove where the animals lay, stroked the smooth feathers of the cock and hen with her hand, and rubbed the spotted cow between the horns. When the old man told her to go and cook some supper, she got it ready very quickly. But when she placed the dishes on the table, she said, I'm not going to feast myself with all these good things while the poor animals have nothing. There will be plenty left for me and I shall take care of them first. Then she went and fetched some barley, which she scattered before the chickens, and a whole armful of sweet hay for the cow. Eat that up, you dear animals, and perhaps you are thirsty, so I'll bring you some fresh water. Then she brought in a large basin of water, and the cock and hen sprung on the brink, dipped in their beaks and lifted their heads in the manner the birds always do drink, while the spotted cow took a long draught. After the animals were fed, the maiden seated herself at the table and ate what the old man had left for her. In a very little while, the fowls had their heads behind their wings, and the cow began to blink her eyes. So the maiden said, Shall we not go to rest? And the old man cried, Little chicks and spotted cow, shall we let her sleep here now? And they replied quickly, Yes, for she is very good. She has brought us drink and food. Then the maiden went upstairs, shook both beds, and made them up. And presently the old man came to his room, and when he laid himself on the bed, his white beard nearly reached to his feet. The maiden also said her prayers, and lying down slept peacefully till midnight, when a number of strange noises awoke her. The corners of the house were creaking and cracking, the doors sprang open and stuck against the walls, the rafters groaned as if their joints were broken and separated, the stairs were turning upside down, and at last there was a crash as if the roof and the walls had fallen in together. Then all was still. The maiden had been too frightened to move, and all had happened so quickly that she would have had scarcely time to do so. But now, finding she was not hurt, and still in her comfortable bed, she lay quiet and went to sleep again. But in the morning, when the bright sunshine awoke her, what a sight met her eyes! She was lying in a noble room, and everything around her was as splendid as the furniture of a royal palace. The walls were covered with golden flowers on a silken ground, the bed was of ivory, and the covering of red velvet and on a chair near it stood a pair of slippers embroidered with pearls. The maiden fancied herself in a dream, but while she wondered, three neatly dressed servants came in and asked her what they could do for her. Nothing, she replied. Only go away, and I will get up and cook the old man's breakfast for him and give those dear animals their food. She dressed herself quickly and went to the old man's room, but what was her astonishment to see lying on the bed a strange man asleep? While she stood and saw with surprise that he was young and handsome, he woke, raised himself, and said, Don't go away. 
I'm a king's son, and a wicked witch changed me into a bearded, gray old man. My castle was changed into the wooden house, and my servants into a cock, a hen, and a spotted cow. The spell was never to be broken unless a maiden came to visit us who had a kind heart, and who was as careful to feed poor animals as human beings. And you are that maiden. And at midnight, while we slept, we were all through you set free. The old wooden house is again a royal castle, and the animals are restored to their former shape as my servants. I will now send them to fetch your father and mother, that they may be present at our marriage, for you are to be my wife. But where are my sisters? she asked. I have shut them up in the cellar, he replied. But tomorrow I will send them to work in the mines till they have learnt that animals require to be fed and kindly treated as well as human beings. The End